recorded from a secret location in the city that moves mountains. Greetings. How's it going? Oh man, that's not what you say. Greetings. Welcome to here to Juba. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Really, really, you're 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 going to go with that this week? I mean, yeah, I'm okay. here in bunker in bunker studios and, and bunker studios. So, and you've you've already messed up, man. You're supposed to say I'm I have come here to chew bubble gum and, and kick, kick ass. ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't matter now. Uh, welcome, everyone, to episode 39. We are also live on Zoom on uh, the uh, Short Shit Show. Uh, Rebecca is in the studio in Bunker Studios. Dirty Dan is in Bunker Studios. And um, I understand that, that you had uh, some problems earlier this week. In regards to? Uh, you were setting up a dating profile, and you wanted to pick a username that uh, people would let, you would let everyone know that you love kids, and you picked Little Kid Lover, and that almost got you in trouble. You arresting. weren't supposed to tell anyone that. What? You told me not to. Exactly, so why did you? Well, because it's funny. You're not wrong. Okay, okay. Rebecca, how are you doing? Welcome in to Bunker Studios, here to Chew Bubblegum. Thank you guys so much for having me. This is awesome. Uh, we We are... We love having you here, and um, we love having you here. We love having both of you guys here. Uh, this is a treat. This will probably be a two-part episode because I know when we get together and uh, talk uh, that we... It's we, hours. Yes, hours, yeah. but it is very important stuff. Uh, but uh, Dirty Dan and uh, Rebecca are going to be in for two podcast shows and two radio shows. Making the big bucks now. Exactly. You're getting paid? Yeah, he yeah, he didn't tell you? No. Okay. <laughs> You'll get the tip later. Oh, 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 oh that's what she said. <laughs> oh. Crazy. Um, our uh, first radio show that we recorded uh, aired last week, we've had a great response from that. And in that radio show, I want to uh, clarify something. We were talking about Ingersoll Lockwood website, and we'll be talking about that uh, here in just a few moments. Um, but um, we, when we were talking about it, um, there was uh, some initials, NCSWIC. And at first, I thought that that was a government thing. No. No, it is not. Do not you want to, to tell the audience what it is? I believe I read it last week. Did you really? Yeah. Are you sure? No. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure about anything. Uh, well, what I told the audience was that it was the National Council for Statewide and Operable uh, Coordinations, which basically deals with uh, cyber defense and stuff like that. I have since learned that NCSWIC stands for Nothing Can Stop What Is Coming. I don't think I read it in that terms, but I do believe I said it. Okay. Really? And last week's show? Reading their website. Okay. Oh, okay. But did you say it on the radio show last week that, that we recorded? We'll have to listen to that. That wire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just say it again, man. Again. <laughs> oh, loving this, loving this. We're going to start out with some listener email just as soon as Rebecca sets back down and picks her email up. Uh, again, we are live on Zoom. We're live on uh, TikTok. Oh, we lost connection. Uh, I have no clue. Technology. Well, we lost it. Well, you know, we're still recording. This is still going to be up. All right. So uh, you can log back in there if you want to. And uh, do you want me to read the first email while you're figuring that out? So do you want me to read, like, who it's from? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is from Nathan98, and it says, Hello, here to chew bubblegum. I recently came across this quote and wanted to write in and share it with you guys and lovers of ear candy everywhere. So here's the quote, and it goes, Remember that stress doesn't come from what's going on in your life. It comes from your thoughts about what's going on in your life. That's by Andrew Bernstein. 
That is a very good email, very good quote. Thank you very much, Nathan. What's your thoughts on that, Dirty Dan? I think you just shouldn't think about stress at all, period. Well, yeah, but that's easier said than done in some cases. But if you think about it, you put it out there, it's going to happen. Well, yeah, true, true. What about you? What's your thoughts on that? I think that it's important to just let things happen and let things flow through you. When you try and harness on to those energies and you try and control those emotions and you try and suppress it, that's when shit gets worse and goes sideways. I agree. She's right. I agree. Let's see. You've got the next one, don't you? Yep. We got Curtis from Missouri. Hey, Goose. Well, it looks like Jeff Bezos' dick ship made it into space. What's your thoughts? <laughs> did you, you say dick shit? I did say dick ship with oh, a P. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I know where your mind's at. <laughs> What's your thoughts? Do you think this will become a new form of travel that companies can make money at? I'll listen for your answer. Roswell. Uh, well, yeah. Um, the only thing, and we talked about this a little bit last night, the only thing that I like is that Wally Funk uh, finally got to go into outer space. You know, a lady that has been uh, instrumental in uh, uh, aircraft testing. She worked at NASA, you know, and I think it's great. You know, her, 82 years young, got to go into outer space. Now, and, and Curtis is right. The ship definitely did look like a dick. Yes, so. and uh, if anybody pays attention to Joe Rogan, he put a fantastic post uh, up on Instagram the other day about the picture of the moon. It says, if you look carefully, you can see the dark spot where Jeff Bezos' dick ship's going to land. <laughs> I have so many questions. But me. before we move on, uh, Friday, the FAA changed the flight rules, and now Bezos and Branson are no longer astronauts. They did not hit the... Really? Yep. Really? Yep. So they held the record for 18 hours. So they, they needed to go just a little bit higher. Significantly higher uh, with much more training and certifications. So, so it's going to be a little while. Do, do you think you'll go back and try it again? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And, I mean, it'd be cool to see the, the youngest and the oldest person in space back there. So hopefully they hurry up before it's too late. What about you? What's your thoughts on it? Dick ship. I just don't see the point. Well, like you didn't go and you like went up and then you went back down. Like, what was yeah. the point? That three and a half minutes of weightlessness is just oh. out of this world. Well, like, can't you get that in a simulation on here somewhere? Uh, oh, well, they have that. Well, yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, I mean, uh, he's got enough money to fucking build one anyway. Like, what well, was... think about something for think about how much money he wasted by doing that. I mean, to be fair, he could have more money, but the youngest astronaut told him he will never spend a penny on Amazon right. to his face. Well, so. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I do love the fact that that Wally did get to go, you know, uh, that that that, and, and you could tell by her speech and emotions that that meant a lot to her. So we had someone uh, comment, and Diana said it was like pissing in the snow to leave your mark. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, if you're doing it in, in uh, Antarctica, it'll be there a while. True. <laughs> Checkmate. Uh, but you know, I mean. I think he did waste a lot of money, but, you know, hey, it's his. Is you know? it really a waste if it's for research and development? What did they research? Well, yeah. They didn't go anywhere. What did they research? What did they develop? Uh, they developed a killer phallic-shaped rocket ship. Oh, my gosh. And they researched, uh, you know, upper limits of easy consumer travel. Isn't too. that what NASA's for? Didn't we already have that before? Yeah, NASA's private sector, quote-unquote. This is actually a public branch. Yeah, I mean, if you can afford it, then it's public, but. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Mary from Tennessee writes, uh, love the show. I'm a new listener, and this is my first time writing in. I've been researching the effects of frequencies on the human body and made this discovery I would like to share with you. Pay attention to whom your energy increases and decreases around. That's the universe giving you a hint on who you should stay away from or stay around. Um I never thought about this, but I do agree, and I get it now. You need to do more segments on frequencies. And it's funny that she wrote that in because actually in a couple of weeks, I do have that down to uh, go over some frequencies on the human body and so forth. It's not just frequencies for the human body. If, uh, if you see this, I've, I've started this defining spheres and frequencies and, and relations. So Nikola Tesla, one of his famous quotes, and it's actually on the map, is that if you want to, uh, want to understand the keys to the universe, you have to think in terms of energy, frequencies, and vibrations. Everything has a frequency. Everything has a vibration. I want in on that call. Sounds good. We'll pencil you in. 
Sounds good. And if anybody's listening uh, right now on Zoom or TikTok, if they do want to be part of the discussion right now, all you've got to do is call 606-373-3396, and you will be live on the air on the show. Again, that's 606-373-3396. Um, I think you've got the next email, don't you? Yes, this one's written in by Starman. Hello, Goose and Dirty Dan. This happened a few weeks back, but I'm only now just seeing it. I was trying to photograph the Milky Way from a yard when, in four frames, I captured a UAP. If this is real, I got a pretty high resolution close up. Devil's advocate, it could be a drone. Validation would be nice, I suppose. Do you think the government will ever come clean? Roswell. No. No. No, they won't come clean. And Starman, thank you for writing in. I wish you had sent the actual picture that you captured uh, in the email. Picks or it didn't happen. If uh, you're listening, like he said, picks or it did not happen. Uh, Rebecca, I'll let you go next. As uh, to respond to that email or read the yeah, next one. Either one. I just, I just want to, I just want to add my two cents in in there. Um, that like any. Any sort of like alien anything is not going to be broadcasted. Like whatever they're broadcasting to you is bullshit. That's my two cents. They're not going to. They're going to come and they're going to come. They they're well. They're already here. They've been here for ever. But it's going to be privately. It's going to be to people that are willing and open to receive their help and their message. It's not going to be to an entire fucking world of a hostile population. It's not going to happen. All right. Next email is eight five nine area code. Warn Ned, tell him to beware of the stinky Twinkie from 2034. It's all up to Ned to save the human race. Message sent from 2034. Did you guys pick that one for me to read on purpose? No, no. I, 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 had I, just, randomly, I just randomly went down and, uh, you know, uh, just, just wrote them down. Uh, we will warn Ned. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we do have a broad audience, a very broad, and, and we love our listeners. Um, some of them uh, are time travelers, and they like junk food. So, hey, it is what it is. Whatever makes them happy, whatever, whatever blows their dress up. There you go. Say hi. Who, who am I saying hi just to? Say, just wave. This is on you right now. Yeah, yeah, just say oh. hi, man. Oh, that's weird. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I love you. <laughs> That's what Goose wanted. He said that I had to do that. Yep. Go ahead with your next email. <laughs> Addicted to ear candy wrote in. I I can't hear you because you've got the papers up over your face. You can't see me. <laughs> hey, here to Chew Bubblegum. Great shows. You guys haven't missed a beat. Keep searching for the truth. It's out there. And someday you will find it. Just use caution and be really careful because once the top is removed, it can't be put back on. Roswell. <laughs> And you know we've 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 got emails like that before, you know, and and, and thank you very much for writing in. Um, it is what it is, and I, you know it's. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your caution. Thank you for your worry. We will keep searching, and I'm a bull in a china shop, so don't worry. What do you think about that? I know that you've been censored some on TikTok. <laughs> some. Uh, well, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. We're currently, um, taking bets to see how long this live is going to last okay. because the other one went down in under eight minutes. Well, I would say once we start talking about Ingersoll Lockwood, it's going to go down pretty quick. Right. Well, I mean, so. she, her lives have a habit of going down the moment my face comes into that picture. And if it's on me, the, we, so, we have our own countdown timer, they, Ingersoll. So they, so they You're, just, they just don't, don't like you. I, I was the OG canceler. We can put it on Goose. I was. Oh no no I was, no! no yeah, you don't yeah. have to do that. I oh, was yeah. removed from that app. There we go. Oh well. See now she put it on me. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Well, we can't have it go down. We're trying to sharing here to is caring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We gotta like you know go around the room. Thank you guys. But um, next one's you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Reed says the Ingersoll Lockwood website is changing daily. Have you been uh, to it in a while? Uh, if not, be sure to check it out. Hidden messages, strange links. It has it all. Mind blown. Yes, I have. We'll be talking about that uh, coming up in segment one. And uh, some pretty fascinating stuff. Um, I don't think it's a game. I don't think it's a LARP. Uh, live role play action, whatever it stands for. No, I, I do not think so. What's your thoughts on it? Real, and Not to go in-depth about it. But, because we won't in a little bit. Yeah. Um. Usually, uh, 
usually every every other day is a visit to it to see what I can get in trouble with. Um, I agree with you. I don't think it's a live action role play, but I'm not quite sure what it is yet. <laughs> what about you, uh, Rebecca? What do you think? I think it's just another piece of the puzzle. You said we should try to call him right now? Okay, we can try to call him right now. <laughs> Who are we calling? Ingersoll Lockwood. Who said that? You, you did. did. You have reached the voicemail of Cyber Defense Media Group. Please leave a message after the tone. Thank you for calling. Hello, this is Goose from Here to Chew Bubblegum. I'm here with Dirty Dan, and um, we do a podcast called Here to Chew Bubblegum. I have emailed you. Dirty Dan also emailed you. Uh, we would like an interview with a representative from your company. Uh, if you can please call us back at area code 606-373-3396 or email us back, goose at here to com. Dirty Dan at here to chew bubblegum.com. We would really appreciate it. And that includes the janitorial staff. I would love to know how your floors are swept. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and please get in touch with us. Now, you look like lost, right? Uh, that was not in the notes. No, 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 it wasn't. That was, a, that, was what we, that was what we call a spontaneous show moment. Oh. So, uh, so my life, then. <laughs> you know, but, and we, we've been calling Ingersoll Lockwood like that for months. And you can call during the week at different times. You get the same, same uh, recording. Uh, you, if you press any buttons to try to get somebody else, you do not get anybody else. Nope. You just can put uh, on another list. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so this is why I didn't read the uh, intro or say the intro that way. This is. This is going to be special just for a repeat write-in for me. Oh, okay. Dixon09 reads, greetings. I have here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Love the new opening. See, man, you just messed it up, though. I you did. said, I have here. I, I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. I'm sorry. I'm excited all right, for my all listeners. Right, all right. All right. You have to know how to read. Okay. I, I got a third grade education. You got to give them the pictures to follow Got along. you. I need Braille. Let's see. <laughs> Have you heard about the new Lonnie Zamora UFO case? It happened April 24th, 1964. Lonnie was a police officer from New Mexico and a very credible witness. I won't give any more details, but I think it will be a good fit for the next The Truth Is Out There installment. Roswell, my friends. I've heard of that a long time ago. Uh, I would have to go back and refresh my memory. Uh, Dixon09 writes in a whole lot. He's yes. a loyal listener and fan of the show. We would definitely check that out and have that on the uh, next Truth Is Out There series. And Dixon, I'm all out of bubble gum. And Rebecca has the next email. This guy is a loyal listener. He doesn't write in a lot, but he is from Africa. From oh, interesting. So it's from is it is it Obi of the Strange? Obi of the Strange. It is correct. Hello, sirs. I really like the July Fourth show. I now follow Miss Rebecca on TikTok. She is very interesting, and I find her nice to look at. She has, I swear to God, you picked these on purpose. No, no, I, I randomly went she has, down. She has knowledge and shares it with the masses. You must, you must have her back again. I really like her. Goodbye for now. Thank you very much. She's OB definitely nice strange. And uh, surprise, uh, Rebecca actually read your email. No, I, when you asked me that I needed any help, I was going down randomly and just writing your name. Well, then it was meant to be, so, wasn't it? That's exactly right. That is what I'm saying. We have Wendy from Virginia. Fourth of July show was a killer. I've listened to it at least four times. Rebecca is the whoa man. Keep it up, sister. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Lock on. There you go. Flocking around. There you go. <laughs> and uh, All right. This is from Wondering. Hey, Goose and everyone at Here to Chew Bubblegum. I listened to the show and had a the show that had the Get Real segment on it. Why do people get so upset over that? I thought it was great. I think you should do more, Roswell. Uh, oh, good. That's thank good. you very much, Wondering. We we are going to do more. Um, we will probably do those once we get going with the new with with the new flow. We will probably do those at least once a month. Uh, we may do a whole show of nothing but get real topics. I have no clue why people got so upset over that. Uh, because they can't handle so, the truth. So, so the reason that people get upset over that shit is because they have their own inner problems that they're dealing with, and it's all just projection. And honestly, it, here's my thing. This is what I say. Like at my house, if it can't make it through the first, the, the top rack of the dishwasher, 
It was not meant for our household. If a shirt does not make it through a full altogether load of laundry, the shirt was not made for this household. They're just not made for it. They can't handle it. And, and some people won't be able to, and that's and, just on them. And and I totally get what you're saying, and I totally support it, and uh, I uh, agree with you. I've listened to that just that segment, and we really didn't say anything. You know, no, it's it's that all that bad. Handle someone's opinion on something going on. Your exactly. Spirit just irritates exactly. Their demons. You know, it, but we had so many people prior to that wanting us to do a get real segment. Me included. And uh, we are going to, like I said, do that again. So it's going to get real, real quick. That's exactly right. You know, and I've said before, I've said this on the radio show a few weeks ago. If you do not like this, turn the channel. You don't have to listen. I don't give a shit. It's or, free to scroll. There it is. So, there it is. Thanks for playing. <laughs> you know, uh, let's see. You've got the next one, don't you? Sure do. Now, this is a good question. This is the one that I told you guys about last night. This is several questions. Yes. Yes, it is. So Amanda from Florida writes, if you had to choose to know the truth about one of the following, what would it be and why? She has truth about Antarctica. Who killed JFK? Truth about the pyramids. And uh, thanks for reading my question. I await your answer. Well, that's not a question. I'll let you go first. Which one would you pick? I can only pick one. Pick one. Pick, pick, pick one. Well, yep. then I'm going to go with the pyramids because there's pyramids in Antarctica, so then I would get some answers from Antarctica, so that's how I'm going to work that one. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going with JFK because okay. it all relates back to the secret societies that would be coming from Antarctica and the pyramids. Okay. It goes way back before that. The secret societies were around before JFK was even fucking thought of. That, that's what I'm saying. If I go there, the who's involved, I have a pyramid of my own. Oh, no. The pyramids are the beginning. Why would you not choose the pyramids? Because if you start at the beginning and you only get one, that's the, as high as you can go. If you start at the top, you get it all. The pyramid is everything. No, it's not. The pyramids start at the top. Not if you're at the bottom. I think I would pick the truth about Antarctica because I think if you knew the truth about Antarctica, I think that naturally you would know who killed JFK and you would know the truth about the pyramids. But then that excludes the pyramids on Mars. Well. See, the pyramids are all encompassing, right? So then yeah. I would know about all of the pyramids. Yeah. But I think there is a lot hidden in a, in, uh, Plain sight. Antarctica. And I think that if you knew the truth about that, you would just naturally know the other two. Look, either way, with the three of us, there's three topics. We're going to get the whole truth anyway. Uh, Big facts. True, true. Big brain time. Oh, look at Chris thinking. Team spirit. Who's Chris? Oops. Yeah, Dirty Dan. Sorry. So. You're fired. <laughs> no, she's not. Sorry, Obi. She's, <laughs> she's a Chris, special guest. You're here because of me. <laughs> Again, if anyone on TikTok or Zoom want to call in right now, all you got to do is call 606-373-3396. That's 606-373-3396, and you will be live on the show. Our next write-in that Rebecca will read is also a normal supporter. Oh, 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 wait. I, oh, shit. I'm not even on the right page. Big E. <laughs> Amateur hour. Hey, Big E. What up, Big E? Hello, everyone. I've listened to the show for a month or so now. I've not listened to any old shows, just the recent ones. This may have been asked before. If so, I apologize. But how did you come up with the name for your show? Also, why do some people send their emails with the word Roswell? This is a very good question, especially for all of the, uh, all of the newcomers that yes. you have. Yes. And um, I also have the same question. We, uh, uh, the name of the show, um, I came up with an idea to the actual do do the actual podcast last August. Uh, it took you know research and ordering equipment and getting a, 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 a dot com name. And uh, I originally was thinking about going, "Hey, wait a minute, Doc from Back to the Future," because I wanted to talk about uh, UFOs, time travel, other dimensions, uh, you know, paranormal, Bigfoot, you know, just everything. And uh, one of my favorite movies. Uh, from the 80s was uh, They Live, you know, which starred R uh, Roddy Piper. And uh, in that, he says, I have come here to chew bubblegum. And kick ass. And kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Yes. And uh, so I searched here to chew bubblegum, and uh, nobody had a dot .com. So I bought it, and that's how we got the name. Um, as for Roswell, if people have heard of or listened to Art Bell, 
uh, people would end their emails with Roswell. That was a way that they said, you know, like love and peace, peace and love. Yeah, peace be with you. So, you know, our listeners, and that shows, you know, the, the true ones that have listened to Art Bell and they get what we're talking about. They get where we're coming from. You know, I mean, I am not going to lie. I mean, if somebody asks me my opinion on something, you know, you, you've asked for my opinion. I'm going to tell you what I think. So, you know, that's that's how we came As up with the name. Should. Just don't get mad about it when you don't like it. Exactly. exactly. And that's how we came up with the name, and that's what Roswell means. Jay from Indiana wrote, if you haven't heard, <clears throat> if you haven't heard, there is some very interesting sighting in Siberia. Pretty eerie photos. If you have time, search for them on DuckDuckGo. We will goose it. Yes. Thank you, Jay. I, I, we will definitely do that. Yes. Goose it. Yes. I like that. You know, you. goose it. I think it's an easy transition from Google. Like, did you Google it? Like, yeah. did you goose it? Because Duck, Duck Goose, right? Do you remember I like that? it because my name's Goose. Right? So. I mean, it ties in in so yeah. many ways. Yes, so yes, it does. So we need to stop saying Google. Exactly. Exactly. We need to goose it. Uh, Rebecca, you've got the next one. Uh, the time, the, the traveler. Goose and Dirty Dan, hello. I am the traveler. I am going to conduct a secret astral travel experiment. I will tell you the results in the coming months if I pull it off. Without giving much away, I will tell you that it involves electromagnetic fields and copper, among many things, among among other things. Sorry. Well, thank you very much, Traveler. Um, you know, if you can, uh, let us know uh, what we're doing six months from now. Or, I mean, you know, what I might eat next Tuesday. That, that'll be fine. You, so you don't know what you're going to eat next Tuesday? I don't. I already have mine planned out for, like, the next month. That's a little Aren't you an overachiever? No. I don't. I just Talk said that. Talk about meal prepping is extreme. <laughs> I just said that. Uh, Paul from Kentucky writes in, Hello, here to chew bubblegum. I thought the economy was going to suddenly crash this summer, but it seems to be happening slowly. Slower than I expected. What's your opinion on this, Roswell? Uh, <laughs> I feel like this should get postponed until the Real Talk segment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thank you, Paul. We will... I will circle that, and we will hold on to that We're going to circle back so, to that. We will circle back to that one. <laughs> All right. Not that Kevin Smith. Hey, Goose, a few episodes back, you mentioned some people thought that Bob Joyce was Elvis Presley. <laughs> I looked into this and have my own thoughts, but interested if you could share a little more on why you don't think he is. Keep the ear candy coming, Roswell. Have you guys heard about this? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, the guy does look like Elvis Presley. I'm like, a, you know, a white, older, you know, a uh, white-haired, white beard version of Elvis. And he does sound exactly like him when he sings. There's similarities in the voice when he's talking. Bob Joyce is a preacher. But here's the deal. If Elvis was alive today, he would be in his 80s. Bob Joyce was only like uh, 12 or 13 years old when Elvis passed away. So just based on that, I do not think that uh, Elvis Presley is Bob Joyce. And Bob is a, uh, is a uh, preacher. Uh, with a small church, I think, in Arkansas. But, you know, just based on the age, I just do not think that it is him. It's pl it's possible, but not plausible. I don't I, I don't even think it's plausible. I mean, because there's, there's just so, no, no, no. Elvis is dead. No, he's not. He I just disagree. walked through the front door. Huh? I disagree. You think Elvis is alive? Mm -hmm. Do you think he could be Bob Joyce? Why do you think Elvis is alive? Now, he would be like, what, 88, 89 years old? I think Elvis is alive. I think Michael Jackson is alive. I think Epstein is alive. Now, I think JFK Jr. is alive. Uh, I do think JFK Jr. is alive. I think it's possible Michael Jackson's alive. I think it's very possible that Epstein uh, is, uh, there you go, is, uh, uh, could be uh, alive. They used Anthony Bourdain to uh, sub in for Epstein. Epstein is alive. I, I think Elvis is dead, though. Honestly. Well, my buddy's going to get married by him in uh, September in Vegas, so I'll have him let you know. Okay. Okay. We have uh, Starfly writing in saying, Goose and Dirty Dan, greetings and salutations. First, let me say that you do a great job and that I really enjoy the show. With that in mind, please get Rebecca Short on the show again. You ask, we deliver. She's unbelievable and makes a lot of sense to me with the subjects that she's talked about. Since her first appearance, I have bought two Awakening Maps. I wish that I had heard of Rebecca earlier and the map. Thank you for making me not only thank you for making not only me but so many other listeners that I've gotten to know aware of her. Roswell. 
Thank you, you very, very much welcome. for Starfly. And uh, you are 100% correct. Uh, uh, I do uh, agree with her, uh, except that Elvis is dead. I'm joking. <laughs> it's a joke. If looks that's could fine. kill. If, if, that's fine. We can, I mean, we can discuss all sorts of things. I love a good debate. What do you say? It, it, we can agree to disagree. We can agree. There you go. Absolutely. There you go. And we can still be fucking friends that's, and have a relationship. Imagine <laughs> that. What a concept. Imagine, imagine. What a concept. Who knew? Yeah. Unbelievable. What are we doing? You're reading um, the next yep, email. You're next. <laughs> Tammy from Georgia. Hey, Goose and the rest of the gang. I'm a new listener and discovered your show through a friend of mine. Have you heard of anything in, regal- in regards to the Paintsville train versus UFO story? Oh, I found the report online and agree with you that it sounds like an incident report, which also makes me think that it's true as well. Um, we have not heard anything else uh, through our Freedom of Information Act request. However, some new company here uh, may or may not have connections in with that railroad company and currently submitted a request through him, and he is working on getting me back some information. So well, good. stay tuned. Good. Stay tuned. And also, in a couple of weeks, we will have uh, some of the guys that actually went down to the site. And, and, and yes, uh, to the site. We'll have those in. And we'll be doing an interview with those, which will be in, in future episodes. But as of now, no, we've not heard anything else about it. Uh, I do think that it was real. It's it's just in a holding pattern with the you know government report. Let's see, Dirty Stan. Hello, Dirty Stan. I wonder where you got that name from. Hello, Dirty Dan, and welcome to the Here to Chew Bubblegum Show. Let me say that your first radio show was fantastic. Thank you. You seem like a highly intelligent man who knows what he's talking about. I am flattered. I'm looking forward to hearing you more on the show. Roswell, my friend, and kick ass. Dirty Stan, love the name. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I do like to think that I have somewhat of a clue uh, about what I'm talking about. So uh, I appreciate you hearing that and uh, carry on. Why do you keep looking at me? Because you say otherwise. I was, I was, I was wanting to get your thoughts on, uh, on that email. I, uh, you're speechless. No, yeah. <laughs> I I agree that Dirty Dan is very intelligent on a plethora of topics. Mm-hmm. However, there is an element of just snapple cap facts. Really, like <laughs> you're this smart, but you're gonna do this? Okay, I mean, <laughs> you do, you do, you do. Let's see. Uh, I think you've got the next one there. Lori from Kentucky. Hello, Goose, Ned, Pup, and Dirty Dan. What do you think about the condo falling down in Florida? I think it's an inside job. I think it's connected to the John McAfee's death or, sus- or supposed death. Please share your thoughts, Roswell. Uh, I am going to circle that one. Thank you very much for writing in, Lori. Yeah, that one's going to have to. Uh, you know, you... You guys can comment on that if you want to. I mean, I can give them the the, the quick answer, uh, the the real talk answer, real quick. Uh, it was stick frame construction. Eighty five percent of the buildings were down there because of the sudden population boom. Um, so, how to get people living there cheap? Build quick. Stick frames, weather, salt, hurricanes, bad idea. What do you think about the video though that has the the flashes, the cut, the or like two flashes coming out from under the parking garage and then it goes down. A few seconds later. I mean, I think Rebecca would be the one to answer that because uh, she's uh, on a Ted Krasinski watch list now with clocks coming through the mail. So. Oh, my God. I made a terrible mistake. I uh-huh. made a terrible, innocent mistake. So because of the we call it the flock, right? right? Right. The flockers. So I was like, oh, my God, you guys got to send me clocks from like because we're international. <laughs> You know, we have people uh, from South Africa. Yeah, like, they're all over the place, right? So I was like, you guys got to send me clocks so that I know what fucking time zone we're in, right? So <laughs> it wasn't until one of my flockers had a debacle at the post office sending a ticking box to me. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible idea. If you're going to send me a clock, don't put the ba- I will put the batteries in it, and I will set it. Just there you go. There you go. Why did you grab my microphone stand? What the hell's wrong with you? I didn't grab it. Yeah, I'm it used was... to the room in the pit I have, uh, and, uh, you know, I just went to stretch and... yeah. You almost nailed him in the face. Yeah, yeah, you did, man. I'm not a tiny guy. I apologize. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. If my mic stand is in your way, please just move it. Listen, the two fight nicely in the sandbox. <laughs> it's my ball pit. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, who's? Uh, I think you've got the next yes, one. Yes, sir. Mike from Unknown Location. More shit show. 
It more says shit. short. Short shit, shit show. show. More short shit show. Please have her on again. She's great. Hi. She's here. Thank you very much, Mike, from your unknown location. Rebecca has the next one. Oh, Kyle. Hey, Dirty Dan. Tell us a little about yourself. What are your hobbies, favorite movies? What's your go-to song that you never get tired of listening to? Looking forward to hearing more of you. Razzle, my friends. His favorite song is Handlebars by Flowbots. That is wrong. Um, I, uh, I'm Dirty Dan. I'm, I'm now 30 years old. I like long walks on the beach at night. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, I am a, a, a diesel geek, diesel freak. Anything, uh, anything with a diesel engine in it, I love to tinker with and see what I can do to 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 just make it do things that aren't possible. Um, it intrigues me, fascinates the hell out of me. And uh, music, I'm a, I am a musician as well. Uh, so, any what was the name of the first band you ever played in? First name of the band, uh, I was in a Sum 41 cover band called Pain for Pleasure. Of course you were. Mm-hmm. And we rocked our high school for color day, okay? Mm-hmm. But I believe it. Mine was Deceiver, it and was, we actually rocked two high schools at uh, that had talent shows. Well, we didn't play two high schools at once. We just played one. Well, we didn't either. We played one one week and one the next week. <laughs> so. Naturally. <laughs> okay. My band played six high schools. There you go. There you go. You were a one-man band. I don't have a musical bone in my body, so. I'm just going down well, side. What was, what was the first song that, that your band learned to play? Fat Lip. Hmm. Paranoid was mine. I was, uh, I, I was the drummer, but I was also the lead vocalist. So I learned real quick how to separate all four limbs and my mind from each other. So you also sang. Mm-hmm. He can sing. Go ahead and sing something for us right now. No. Do I put handlebars on for you? <laughs> well, I, I don't. I, I don't know if we'll be able to use copywritten music on yeah. on the Spotify. No, he, and all I've that, just I have so. overplayed that song so to much Helen that back ninety eight he, times. <laughs> <laughs> all I have to hear is that boink boink boink, and right off the bat, and I'm just turn it off, turn it off, skip next, go. Oh. Yeah, see, you've got the next one. I, I'll I'll take the last one, and then we'll take a short short break. But my song is Wrong Side of Heaven by Five Finger Death Punch. That song means a lot to me for many different reasons. Never get old. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. That's okay. Good. You want to read your next email? Oh, yeah, okay. Wait on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just, you know, my dating profile. Take your time, yeah. man. Take your time. Yeah, you know, The whole show is just about you. How's it feel? <laughs> <gasps> My, oh. whole, my whole show and every other person's asking is, for you to come back. Is. She is she is fucking awesome though. So. <laughs> HDR kid writes in, "Hey Goose and Dirty Dan, I do often wonder what would happen if John Titer's time machine, the GE C two hundred four, were to malfunction and send him to two thousand thirty five instead of twenty thirty six. Would it be the end of our universe? Would there be two John Titors instead of one?" Okay, first, thank you for your question. Uh, nothing would happen because the John Teeter story is bullshit. It was made up by a, uh entertainment uh, lawyer from the state of Florida. Uh, sorry, HDR uh, kid, but uh, that is just what I think. You should look at uh, DuckDuckGo your results instead of Googling it. Yeah, yeah. Who said? There you, there you go. Have, if- have you heard about the John Teeter thing? Yes. What's, what's, I mean, have you, have you done any research on it? No, because as soon as I read the title, I was like, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. It's, it's totally made up. Yeah. So, uh, the last one I'll take it and, uh, it is from Tara. She writes, hello everyone. Uh, and my fellow ear candy lovers, you've talked about the, uh, Aldebaran mystery on the show before. If you haven't, I recommend the unedited and uncut version. It has so much more information. Thank you very much, Tara. Um, I have saw it. I don't know if I saw the uncut and unedited version, but I will definitely check that out. Um, I do want to thank everyone for writing in. You can always contact us. You can always call, text, or leave a voicemail by calling 606-373-3396, or you can email myself, Goose, at heretochewbubblegum.com. You can email Pup, Ned, or Elliot, heretochewbubblegum at yahoo.com, or... Dirty Dan at here to chew bubblegum.com. And that's it. 
We're going to uh, take a short break, and uh, we will be back in just a few minutes. Take a lighter look into the darker side of the world. Join Elliot, Gertie, and Beagle as they jump into the dark abyss of hauntings, serial killers, conspiracy plots, and beyond. The Spooky Family Podcast premieres July 1st, wherever you find and listen to quality podcasts. <laughs> we will conquer all the oceans you can name. Yeah. No, we won't take anything. Yeah, I ain't taking nothing. All the you can name. And welcome back to Here to Chew Bubblegum. I am Goose. Across the table is my partner in crime, Dirty Dan. And at the other end of the table is Rebecca Short from the Short Shit Show on uh, TikTok. And uh, Telegram. Telegram. Uh, Instagram. Instagram. Really? In- uh, Instagram? Yeah, she, uh, she had a request for it and... Well, that is cool. Has assembled a short shit show or the flock Instagram. Well, good. It's, it's, good. Short, it's short shit show. Uh, again, we are live right now on uh, Zoom and uh, TikTok. If anybody does want to call in, all you got to do is call 606 373 3396. That's 606 373 3396. And you will be on Here to Chew Bubblegum. With Goose, Dirty Dan, and uh, Rebecca Short. We're going to start out segment one. We're going to talk about the Ingersoll Lockwood website. And uh, Dirty Dan has something to say. How do you get to Wonderland, over the hill or underland? We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. I am Ingersoll Lockwood, and I shall be your guide as we travel through time and space. It all began and lasted for six weeks during a hot uh, Philadelphia summer in 1787. Freedom for humanity and the beginning of a great awakening. But where there is good, there is always evil. One cannot exist without the other. Let us fast forward to the trigger years, moments ruled by Luciferans. The first of note was April 14th, 1865, at 10.15 p.m., in the Ford Theater in Washington, D.C., in a flicker of time and space. Our great awakening was once again halted by the most corrupt and evil of sorts. Fast forward to a moment shortly after noon on November 22nd, 1963, in Dealey Plaza in downtown Dallas, Texas. Welcome to Bushy Knoll. Down a rabbit hole we go. It's 6.05 p.m. on April 4th, 1968, Memphis, Tennessee. Darkness sets in. A new world order begins to take shape. This timeline fragments into two. A Great Awakening struggles to live. It is birthed on January 20th, 2017 in Washington, D.C. Yet once again, the Luciferans strike. It's October 18th, 2019. Enter the Great Reset, Event 201. Will they suffocate once and for all? Humanity's Great Awakening. The final countdown has begun. I will be traveling forward to explore the possibilities and return to share my findings. 2030 beckons me. Vision? Prophecy? Actual time travel? Project Looking Glass? Metaphor? Future precognition? While I can offer guidance, only together can the awakened affect the necessary changes to save humanity. My time invested in sharing my knowledge of the timeline with Franklin Patrick Herbert Jr., Steve Samuels, and many other keepers of the flame must not go to waste. It's time, your time. So much to do, so little time. Time is the fire in which we burn. We are running out of time. The fate of humanity rests in the hands of the awakened. The sleeper must awaken. And uh, what Dirty Dan just read, you can find that at IngersollLockwood.com backslash QA. 
you must type it. And um, you must put backslash QA because if you don't, you will not get to it. Yeah. You uh, cannot put Q and A, no Q no. ampersand A, QA. Yes. Uh, I just, I just want to real quick, um, just to kind of tie this together mm-hmm. um, on the map, um, down in towards the left hand corner in the Q circle, it says follow the white rabbit. And then all the way over, on the very edge of the right side of the map at the bottom, there is a picture of a white rabbit. You mean that white rabbit? Yep. Yeah. So it's yeah. all connected. Yes, yes, it is. And um, like you said, if you ac- if you go to the website, IngersollLockwood.com, uh, the only way to access that page that he just read is by, uh, once again, IngersollLockwood.com backslash QA. Um, now, that's going to take you to a Q&A section. And you go to the bottom, there is a red dot after the word awaken. It's a period. Mm-hmm. Click on that. And that's how you access what he just read. Anything red, the color red, no, period, no. Color, yeah. words, click on them. You know, and if you see anything on the website that is blank, that is white, copy it, mm-hmm. paste it in a notepad or word program, and it will reveal some hidden messages. It can be a website. It can be a passage. It can be... Anything. Now, and, and this website is updated daily. I mean daily. And there's a lot of similarities now on this website with some of the uh, Dead Man Switch information that's coming out, uh, especially on if you're on the uh, uh, official Mc, uh, McFay on uh, Telegram. Uh, McAfee. McAfee. Sorry. Who the fuck is McFay? I don't know. See, I told you earlier, I get, I, I get going my uh, – Mouth gets ahead of my brain. But this is a very fascinating subject. Some of the things that I've found on the Ingersoll Lockwood website that I'd like to talk about, uh, and I want your guys' feedback on this, stop me and interject at any time. They talk about Project uh, Looking Glass. And Project Looking Glass uh, prediction, according to their website, is lockdown 2.0 by late October, early November 2021. They claim it's the Delta variant of COVID-19, and they'll be starting this rumor in mid-July 2021, ramping throughout all mainstream media outlets. Now, this was actually on their website back in October. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So, see, the, the, no, the, that was not on there yesterday. They've actually updated that since yesterday. But There's a new set of dots. You know, think about what's going on now. They're talking about the Delta variant. I just, I want to, like you said, the uh, Looking Glass Project. Yeah. So if anybody is following along with the Great Awakening map, you know that everything is placed on there for a reason, and things are next to each other for a reason. So around, not only is it next to Antarctica, mm-hmm. but it's also next to the um, Bosnia Pyramid. It's next to the Philadelphia Ooh. Experiment, and it's next to the secret undersea bases. It's next to the light orbs. It's mm. next to the Paradise California Fire. Just saying. It's all connected. Now, th- th- they also, in this same section where I read that, they say a potential supply chain increases growing and in artificial food shortages beginning in the same time frame. So this website is predicting that there'll be a lockdown 2.0 in uh, late October, early November, and that there'll be a food shortage. You're shaking your head. You don't, you don't, you don't uh, agree with that? I think anything with dates and anything that they're going to tell you is bullshit. And the only reason that they're doing that is so that they can make a profit because everybody's going to go panic buy everything okay. right, and prepare for all of it. We cannot give it energy. Okay. We can't. But they actually put this on their website. This was a copy and paste from like June. Mm-hmm. But look at what's going on now. Now, I am myself skeptic about anybody that puts dates on stuff. But just looking at when this was posted... And what is going on now in the news, it seems right on track. Now, if this does happen during their time frame, this company has access to time travel. Yeah. I guess time will tell then. Right, right. What's your thoughts on it? Well, real quick, was this on the website the other day too? The link for the Nuremberg Code? Um. Not that particular one, but 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 they did talk about that a little bit. But that particular site was not on there. It's literally changing in front of us right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it, it changes daily. It changes I daily, daily. But uh, 
this is, this is a little much. A little much. Okay. Um, on this website, too, it says lockdown, stay at home, social distance equals death. A new wave of research suggests that social separation is bad for us as individuals with less social connection. Go ahead. So that also ties in to the frequencies and energies and stuff like that, because if they keep us six feet away, not mm-hmm. only is it a satanic ritual to have a mask and be six feet away from each other, but we also get disconnected from our energies. So like you're not going to be able to feed off of other people's energies and get those good vibes because they're keeping us separate. Six feet apart. Well, all right. L- let, me, let me ask you something that just popped in my head. Okay. Yeah, shoot. You said that this is all connected, mm-hmm. okay? And I think that you're right. I think it is all connected. It's right on their website. But you also disagree with the potential food shortage and the shutdown 2.0 because they gave a date. So what's your question? Is you, let me help you if, clarify. If it's all connected. It's not It's not the actual food shortage. Right. It's the dates. Got you. Got you. It's, so It's the dates. And, the like, the food shortage is, like... They're that trying to use. Is, yeah, they're going to use it. So everything has is duality, right? right? Everything has a positive and a negative, right? So the the negative out of the out of the lockdowns and the pandemic was the complete despair and people losing their jobs and all of that shit that happened, right? Right. But the positive out of it, look at the awakening that happened. They locked us in our houses and forced us to do shadow work to get deeper in touch with ourselves to find more like minded people. There's the positive. So, of course, they're going to use that to try and manipulate it into their way, into the negative way, into keeping us stuck. We have to not give it that negative energy and just ignore that. But there's not going to be a date. Yes, yes, Dirty Dan. <laughs> uh, hand up. So the date is the false flag because then that creates mass panic and people mm-hmm. go out and buy everything and create the shortage themselves. Right, yep. right. But Bingo. that's the distraction so that while everybody's freaking out because they've already bought it and it's happened before... That's when they slide in and do their little dirty DM stuff. Yep. Well, yeah. They didn't give a specific date, though. They just said, you know, late, late October, they early might, November. They might need more than just a day or a week to do whatever okay. they got to do. Uh-huh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me ask you something that, that you brought up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to add on to what uh, Dirty, dirty Dan. Dan said. Thank you. Um, is everything, like... Especially, like, if we want to tie this back to Q, right, with all the dates they were dropping, they were like, oh, yeah, it's bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Everything is a day at a time, right? Because certain things can't play out until other certain things happen. So how could you possibly give a date if they don't know how everything else is going to play out? Even even October is still a date. Right. 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 Okay. Okay, So what's your other question? Uh, My question was, during the first lockdown, Mm -hmm. you know, people woke up, Mm -hmm. you know, why would they want to have a second one? What what would happen at the second one? Would more people wake up? Would, you know, do you get what I'm saying? So the time, in my personal opinion, this is my two cents, so take it or fucking leave it. Um, I think that it is too late for anybody else to to wake up, right, if we're going to use those terms. The, that train has already has already passed. What's happening now is they are going to try and suppress the ones that are in the process of waking up. They are going to try and pull them back into the into the dark side, I guess, if we're going to label things, right? They are going to try and make that fear and that negativity even stronger with the others, if for, for lack of better words, right? If we're trying to, like, right. talk about this. Scare tactics. Exactly, exactly. And you have all of these, all of these other people that are totally against the free thinkers, that are totally against people questioning the narrative, they're the ones that are going to to make this happen because they're going to gung-ho fucking believe it. According to an equation on Ingersoll's site, that date for anyone who wasn't awake yet, it's too late, was April 10th of last year. I agree. Really? I agree. And we have until uh, April 10th of 2024 that... That is that is our time to have the great awakening reclaims humanity. So what the um, recording that you read because we listened to mm-hmm. it last night, well, right? Part or of it. this morning? I don't remember when it was. It doesn't matter. Um, but the the great awakening has been stopped several fucking times, and now it is so. I'm getting chills as I'm saying this. 
It is so massive now. I mean, look at the amount of people. Look at the flock, just the flock. And I know that I'm not alone in having, in, in having a group of people, of like-minded people that agree with all of this. I mean, there is a mass amount around the world of people that are awoke, waking up. Yeah, yeah. Now, did that give a cutoff date for people that uh, supposedly, you know, couldn't be awake or whatever? Yeah, that if, if you had not begun your, your journey by April 10th of 2020, then unfortunately you are not going to. Right. Um, also on this website, uh, it mentions turning Nikola Tesla's dream of free energy into a weapon, in this case directed inward at America for greed and profit. So that is the Death Star. Yes. Or the Death Ray. The Death people, Ray. People. Yeah. The, yeah. And it, it is a weapon of mass destruction, 100%, but it is also mm -hmm. the key to free energy if used positively, right? Everything has duality. Yes, yes. Um, and it goes on to say that uh, look at the high-frequency active auroral research program, also known as HARP. This is one of the U.S. government's most powerful weapons. It can be used to control the weather. Nikola Tesla invented it as a means of transporting energy from one point of the Earth to another point. Uh, using what is called ether. In reality, this microwave array aims potential millions of watts of high-energy microwaves in the upper atmosphere, which causes a rubber band-like effect in the ionosphere where billions of watts of high energy snap back down towards Earth at an equal and opposite angle. If you wish to boil water underground or cause an earthquake, you need to test HARP through triangulation by aiming it at three different points then uh, when you're ready to aim it at the dead center of your target, some of the effects on this level of radiation are, and it goes on to list some of them as floods, earthquakes, uh, so forth and so on. What's your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, they've already figured this out with the Giza Pyramid. You know, and they took Nikola Tesla's invention and, you know. Was uh, it Nikola Tesla's invention or was it a download? Well, well we won't know because there's, uh, what, eight missing crates? Uh I or think 20, there were 20 there, there, there was twenty yeah. missing crates. So uh, missing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That they've never been found. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, missing. Did uh did you know that uh the United States mint put a bat quarter out in February of twenty twenty? Are you serious? For what 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 state was that for? National it was Park. All of the US. Okay. They put a bat. Conveniently a bat. On the back of a quarter and released it a month before we suddenly went into a lockdown because of a virus that apparently came from a bat in a wet market. Right. Hmm. <coughs> well, what's your guys' thoughts on this Delta variant? Um, I believe it's it's rather telling to those who have any sort of awakeness to them because uh, when the governor says we're going to mandate masks for fully vaccinated people indoors only, 100% uh, of... Uh, People with the Delta variant are vaccinated. Zero percent unvaccinated people have gotten it. And two strikes. You're not looking too good there. You know, and I was talking to one of my friends about this. I think this could be, and I'll probably get some hate mail from this, you know, sending the goose at, goose at here at chewbubblegum.com. And Dirty Dan. Uh, I think, you know, okay. uh, the um, original COVID was Plan A. Plan A didn't work. And I think the Delta variant could be plan B. See, I, and let's, we were talking about this last night. Let's is try this route. I don't think so. I think COVID was plan A mm -hmm. and plan B, which is, and as I was saying, this is why up until this point and right now, they have been pushing this freaking jab so hard on everybody, shoving it down your damn throats, is that that is the securement to have plan B go into effect. Because, again, no one vaccinated is using it or is getting it, only vaccinated are, and it's got a much higher mortality rate, evidently, than the first one. It's all part of the depopulation plan, and they're falling right into it. Oh, I know. That's, and and a, third of, a third of this country alone has. Now, do, do you guys think that all nanobot technology is bad? What no. about the cases where people with cancer, they have, uh, you know, you used about cancer? the nanotechnology that, that, about that have killed the cancer? Cancer is man-made. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and they and have I, the cure for cancer. And I, it's with frequencies. I think we've had the cure for cancer for a long time. The Rife You're, machine. It's yeah, on the, it's yeah, on the map. Yeah. yeah. The Rife machine. Mm -hmm. well. um, so 
like I said, there's duality in everything. Is It's the intent in which it's used for, right? And your heart can't lie to the universe. So if your intent is to depopulate however much of the world, then, yeah, it's it's an evil, fucking terrible thing. But if your intent with that is to cure something and to help the betterment of humanity, then, yeah, it's awesome. But there there is duality in everything. There's also a backside to that whole depopulation thing because I do agree. Um, we were overpopulated now. Um, and I, I had this revelation while I was having some work done on my, my tattoo and my artist who is very, very awake just stopped and looked up at me and said, Oh my God, we had 7.4 billion people on the earth Mm -hmm. and we were fine. Next census, it was 7.67. Okay. The perfect balance in pH of water is 7.4 too high. Any higher than that? It's alkaline. Any lower, it's acid. What do you think about these people that that drink the alkaline water? That say it's good. It it is one hundred percent, absolutely way more refreshing. It's Shanghai water. It definitely helps hydrate, one hundred percent, and it doesn't leave you quenching more. With that being said, you drink too much and you feel it because you're getting a whole lot of other minerals that you're not used to having. Right, and that's the same thing going on is that we've gotten too much of something here that we're not used to having, and now everything's going out of whack. So big pharma and people who have no business um, spending mo- their money to create, <clears throat> quote-unquote, vaccines right. um, are allowed to do that in a very sick and sadistic way. And, um, and, and now this is where we're at, is this pandemic. Yeah. Uh, Going back to the website real quick, there's something here I want to read, and I'll get your guys' thoughts on this. This is a little lengthy, so just bear with me. Um, You you read what Ingersoll Lockwood supposedly uh, recorded or wrote. Here's something else. It says, uh, let Ingersoll Lockwood take you on a whirlwind adventure from 1945 to 1930. It says the following, Stephen, I assure you, young lad, What I'm about to show you, only time travelers or those from another galaxy far, far away could command this kind of technology. Take notes, pass them on, and share them when the time is right. To defeat what is coming, look to Germany, to a group called the Nazis. When they arrive on scene, they will be given too much of this technology too fast and will fail to deploy it properly. They will infiltrate and slow down progress at the new American Space Agency, but we'll have other places to help guide America exploit this technology. Um, un, until the last president, then move it all into this operation, Space Force. Remember, first, this will be Germans who gain this technology, then we'll have it, then you will be faced with a threat from China after the last president, but he surely knows what to do. Only trust him and disclose when he authorizes you to do so, said Ingersoll Lockwood. Towards the end of World War II, the Nazi scientists made a significant breakthrough in new weapons, technology from sound cannons, advanced machine guns, tanks, ion, and lighting cannons, rockets, and even anti-gravity devices, including flying saucers. Uh, The history you have been taught about Hitler's death, the end of the war, and the final... uh, fall of the Third Reich is actually not based on facts, but based on propaganda and fiction. This diary takes you to the relevant facts, fills in some blanks, and leaves it to you to decide what is actually going to happen in 2030. Some of the questions you might ask yourself. Did Adolf Hitler have numerous doubles and escape to a base 211 in the Antarctic or Argentina? Does the Nazi base 211 still exist today? Is it operational? If so, where is it located and what are they planning? Did working uh, anti-gravity flying saucers make it into production? Are all the UFOs that seem to be popping up globally coming from Nazis and not aliens? Um, Are they uh, test flights of old Nazi technology finally made operational by the U.S. or the Russians? What are the Nazis waiting for? Are they preparing to attack us or do they have a... um, agenda started already to implement their plan after more than 60 years of planning could operation eagle fight and iron eagle still be in play today 
bringing in the Fourth Reich and a new world order. Did President Trump crash a party uh, with fire and fury and begin to restore the great American dream and the republic to the people? Time will tell, and we will share. Read on to decide for yourself. To me, though, that page and a half says a lot, you know, and it says a lot that's in the Great Awakening map. It also goes a lot of what I've been talking about with the Nazi technology and with Hitler and his escape to Argentina and Antarctica and Inner Earth and how they're getting all this information. I mean, it all is fucking connected. Oh, yes, 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 it 100%. is. Yes, it is. I mean, and, and, and this gives the story of how Hitler escaped on this website, you know, and it, it is fascinating. And, uh, you know, he ended up in Argentina, uh, and that's where he stayed, and they gave orders uh, from there. Uh, this one part goes on to give uh, to give you coordinates to, and, and I, I have not Googled these. Goose but it. I, I have not goosed it, but they're from a German map, and it gives you coordinates. And um, I, I've seen pictures of this. These coordinates, one, show an advanced flying machine that has crashed uh, during the test flight, and it also shows underground entrances using submarines and flying machines, and it's talking about Antarctica. Well, I, I have the actual English translation in front of me of your notes, and I have the maps that they drew with that as well. Do you just like taking all of the wind out of my sails? You rain on my parade and steal my umbrella? Why do you do that? I'll just sit here in silence. You guys can continue the show. Flock around and find out. <clears throat> Honestly. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, What's wrong with you? quicker than that. But, I mean, dollar. this website has so many connections to the Great Awakening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you know, when you start looking at the map and you go to point A to point B to point C and you didn't know this and it spins you off this way, this website is the exact same way. The exact same way. That's not going to fall. You're good. So, Mic drop. I hit it. Oh. I do those often. So. You're fine. Well, you've seen what he did to mine. He karate chopped mine over here. Right <laughs> and he like flung it like right into your face. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll do it harder next time to hit it. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, you? I don't want to hurt the microphone. Pow, yeah, right in the kisser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh. I agree with some of what they're saying there, but I, I don't think that we should be looking at it as the coming of the Fourth Reich in that specific, but more of Fauci and his gang are, are the ones leading it. And I think that because of the, <coughs> the transition of so many scientists and the people that actually mattered, not the, the political decision makers, were given more free reign and mo- more of them came over willingly than we captured. Um, I, I do believe that there is sort of a uh, cohort of well, it used to be Axis and Allies that are now working together. Okay, well. And I, I've seen a video of an interview. It was an international flight crew on a military on a U.S. military plane. And they were in Antarctica. And when they were flying, they had to go over a specific area. Um, and they were not to go over the other one. And it was an emergency. They went over the other one. And the engineer looks over and he goes, what the hell are those? And the, the, the German pilot just turns around and goes, they're not from here, buddy. Really? Hmm. So, hey. What if, what if Fulci is a Nazi? I don't think he's a Nazi. I think he's just the devil incarnate. What did people, what were the Nazis? I mean, they were evil, devilish people. The Nazis no. got, the Nazis had a choice to choose good or evil. Mm-hmm. And they, they got, they chose evil. evil right. They got um, what is the word that I'm looking for? I think they were blinded with propaganda. Because uh, right, the like they, they were them. like they, you know what I mean? Like they were told one thing and then it became another. Just yes. like how politics work. Right. I, you know, I, well, I have, all right. I have in my family one that went from one side to the other. So let's say, and then the the, the Nazis supposedly what, met with the Vareal, correct? The Vril Society. Okay. The Vril Society and the Draco. What if after that is when 
they got this evil persona. Hey, we're the chosen people, you know, from that first I, initial meeting. I mean, scientifically, they were so technology advanced. So they were getting they were getting information from the inner earth, okay, which is good and evil because right. there's duality in everything, right. right? And then when they had the first encounter meeting with President Eisenhower, that is when it switched. That's when they decided to go with the dark side. They went with, with the Draco. That's what started the Luciferian. That's what started the reptilian. Like that all became a thing, more of a thing uh, above inner earth because they chose that. And that's when the Vril Society and when uh, Maria Orzik disappeared. And her final words were, nobody is staying here. We're all leaving. Well, I think it was with Eisenhower because, as, as Goose said, you know, they were much more scientifically advanced. Mm-hmm. You know, they were the first ones by a landslide to have not jet propulsion, but rocket propulsion. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, game recognizes game. However, they also realized that, okay, America's a superpower, and they they won. How can we make the best of both worlds? Well, look at how quick their technology advanced from the end of World War One to the beginning of World War Two. Right, but then right after that, after that meeting... Who was the number one country with all that technology and power? Not Germany. We were the leaders in the Cold War. We had that. Why did we suddenly lose that technology? Where did it go? 20 years after it started. Well, I don't think we lost it. That's what I'm saying. I think we had it. We did. I think it's been repurposed to a different culmination of things somewhere down below. If, you know, you, you go back and look at, like, what is the SR-71. The Blackbird, yeah. Yeah, that's similar looking the to a lot yeah, of the planes from Germany that were supposedly anti-gravity. Yes. And, well, they actually were more so because the SR-71 could grow up to 12 and a half feet during right. flight from the heat. Um, and and the, the, the sheer force that those rocket engines, basically, uh, or the... the, the closest thing to were able to give off to propel it that that just got developed overnight like that right well this you know from the website it goes on to say before operation paperclip so many documents and photos to sort through so much time uh let them do their own own research and fill in the blanks disclosure shall continue at a proper pace um again to me this website is just i mean it changes every single day. Um, Do you want to give the website to the listeners? Yes, please go ahead. I don't have it in front of me. It's IngersallLockwood.com. There you go. <laughs> That's all you had to say. Did you not remember that? <laughs> oh, come on, Dirty Dan. You know I got to pick on you. Yeah, come on, Dirty Dan. Yeah, come on, Dirty Dan. <sighs> Dirty Dan's coming. Say something <laughs> funny, Dirty Dan. Uh, under, <laughs> under Q&A. Site, and we told you how to get to that, IngersawLockwood.com backslash QA. Uh, briefly, I'm just going to read some stuff, some questions that have been asked that they answered. Uh, is this website LARP, live action role play? No, this is not a game. We have multiple companies. We are funding and seeking Patriot support. Are you with the CIA? No. What is your mission? Find it on our website, but understand this, we are fighting the Great Reset every single day, and sh- so should you. The Great Awakening must no longer be delayed. All humanity is lost. <coughs> Excuse me for a moment. Um, what's the countdown all about? It's a surprise. Could be a great day for patriots if we all make it so. September 17th is a very important date in American history, Constitution Day. History needs to repeat or there is no America and the U.S. Constitution is just a historic document destroyed by global forces of evil and their corrupt, weak, sick, and evil minds thriving on uh, apparent power stolen from we the people. They are few. We are many. Uh, Is the Ingersoll Lockwood team real patriots? Yes. Are you QAnon? No, we are not QAnon. But we do support the U.S. Constitution and are helping on various constitutional issues. Um, let's see, it's skipping over to some other ones. Okay. <clears throat> Is JFK Jr. alive? 17 says no. RFK hints otherwise. 
There is a high probability, according to RFK Jr. and others, but only time will tell only if and when he reveals himself. Is he, if he isn't, you already know who killed him, don't you? Is time travel possible? Do your own research, you decide. The Nazi bail, which was known as Diaglock, was a failure, and test subjects died horribly. The Philadelphia experiment shows that humanity is not quite ready. Are there flying saucers? I love this answer here. Trial from the 1940s made in Germany with pride. Enough for today. You can find all that on the Ingersoll Lockwood website. That and more. And again, it is changing daily. Why did you skip the Linwood question? Uh, about the lawyer? Oh, I, I had just highlighted some. I heard that Linwood is Ingersoll Lockwood, right? No. Wrong. But he is a patriot. Best test. When the darkness attempts to destroy a person, you will see his true intentions. Now, you know who Lynn Lockwood is, correct? You Lynn, know, Lynn Wood. Or Lynn Wood. You know how he became, like, nationally known? I do not. Uh, through uh, the uh, uh, Olympic Park bombing. He was the lawyer to, uh, uh, I can't think of the guy's name that they were trying to pin it on. He's uh, innocent anyway. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, was it Robert something? We can look it up. I, I, I know it like I know my own name, but that's how Lynn Wood uh, became, uh, you know, nationally known. Prevalent. Yes. Uh, you know, but he is a good attorney. What's your guys' thoughts on all that? Rebecca? What's your thoughts on the whole oh, oh, my turn? Ingersoll Lockwood website? Richard well, Jewell was his name. Yes, by the way. that's it. Yeah, uh, uh, someone just commented that in. Um, what was? I'm sorry. What was your? I have like 18 different oh, things oh, in front of me. Oh, f- uh, my first fine. point. I wanted to interject, which now might be a mute point. But um, which constitution? Because there's two of them. Yeah. Well, it doesn't specify on the site. I think we know which one it is. Yeah. And then I don't remember my other. I don't remember my other point. <laughs> you I'm just going to interject. Yeah, and yeah, and you know that's like I told you to just jump in. What about you? They give their answers for a reason, and they deliver them a certain way for a reason. And I'm just wondering through all these updates, is it just going to be a daisy chain that we're just going to keep getting little bits and bits until we put the puzzle together? Is do you, that how it always works? Do no. you do you think that these people have real inside information? Yes. Now, their the company is legit, you right. know, yes. and, and they do contracts for the government. But I just I just like how, you know, they're asked, why do they rent the building at 1770? Yeah. They could own it. I said, maybe in due time, but is that really mm-hmm. a greater cause right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was one of I the questions you. somebody I asked. You. Um, you know, obviously, they're, they're playing their cards close to home. They have something up their sleeve. They know something we don't. How do we find out? I don't know. I don't know. Just keep it. <clears throat> just keep listening to the show. Do your own research at IngersollLockwood.com. And Rebecca, I think how do we find out? We need to all come together and stop being divided and understand that there is truth in everything and get grounded and connected to your source and allow the answers to get downloaded into you. Read the law of one. Read everything you can. Start investing in books to being they're changing the internet. I totally agree with you. I just drink and know things. <laughs> Winter is coming, Jon Snow. You yes. know nothing. <laughs> so, what do you want to talk about here in this segment? So, Jupiter's volcanic moon, low, is emitting strange radio waves and NASA's Juno probe is now listening. Uh, the Juno spacecraft has gotten pr- a private radio show from Jupiter's closest moon, the highly volcanic low. NASA's Juno spacecraft is, quote-unquote, listening in on radio emissions from Jupiter's volcanic moon low, allowing researchers to discover what triggers the strange radio waves. Of all the planets in our solar system, Jupiter has the largest and most powerful magnetic field, which extends so far that some of the planet's moons orbit with it. Does that sound familiar? Mm Mm-hmm. Because low is closest to the planet, the moon is caught in a gravitational tug of war, so to speak, between Jupiter and two other large moons, according to NASA. The opposing poles cause massive internal heat, which has led to hundreds of volcanic eruptions across the moon's surface. Doesn't that sound an awful like, an awful lot like uh, our situation, minus the volcanoes? 
Of course. What what part are you talking about? I'm sorry. The moon oh. rotating with it. Oh. So if you were on Jupiter right now, much like us, you'd only see Jeff Bezos' dick spot on the moon. Girls go to Jupiter to get more stupider. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Well, I guess we know Goose has his cooties vaccine now. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, man. I just popped in my head. Oh, what, what was that full, that full thing? It's the circle, circle, uh, dot, dot. And now you have the cootie shot. No, no, no. The, uh, the, oh, I, I, I don't even oh, know, man. I've not ju- heard. Uh, girls go to Jupiter to get more stupider, and boys um, go to go to Mars, or is it Mars? Oh, Venus, something. I can't remember, actually. I thought I had it. It's gone. Sorry. So that's stuck in your you, head You understand now. that that is deep in the fucking filing cabinet and yeah, in the depths yeah. of my consciousness somewhere. What? But yeah, I want to know um, why our moon doesn't rotate, and I think it's because it's held with a tractor beam because of the war with uh, Meldek and Mars. But just my two cents. Now, do you think the moon is hollow, too? Yes. How many bases do you think are on the moon? Several. <laughs> Six. Seven. Why? Because it's seven. When now do you think that the first one that was human man built? Do you think it was built in the sixties no. or no. prior? None of them were, were well, human. Do built. you think the well supposedly from the document that somebody emailed me several several weeks ago? Um, there, would, there was a plan that would be number six, and that went up in the eighties. Okay, so it didn't that's, go up in the sixties. That's that's what I it was started creation in the sixties. Okay, um, and the Apollo missions were to see the the plausibility of getting it there, um, and how they would need to anchor it more or less, um, which doesn't make sense if you realize the moon isn't also spinning. Right, it's it's all pulled with us. It, it doesn't turn. So technically, there shouldn't be any other different force than what we have. Um, but yeah, I, I believe it was like eighty one or eighty two is what I saw that it, it got actually okay. deployed. So they actually made the plan in the sixties. Yes, but it was, it was like twenty some years later. It was sixty four, sixty five. I want to say okay. Um, and it was constructed uh, in pieces all throughout the seventies, and then nineteen eighty one or nineteen eighty two is when it was sent up. Do you think we landed on the moon? Yes. When, in 1969, when they said we did, do you think that was real and legit? Uh, I, I think, think that we first, landed on the moon, but I think that the footage was fake. I think the first part of the clip was real, and then it went to a nice soundstage. I want to know why there's no stars. We were talking about that the other night. Yeah, we were talking about that last night, and I never really thought about it. No. Why no. are there no stars on any picture? Okay, so they... okay. So supposedly, Allegedly. hypothetically, there's a rover on Mars, okay? So there's a little robot on Mars taking pictures. Mm-hmm. Why are there no fucking stars? Now, you're going to tell me, oh, well, you can't see the stars in deep space. Bullshit, because if you take a picture of the galaxies and the cosmos, right, is that not all of the stars and the planets fucking swirling around? Why can't you see that shit? I thought that they did release a picture uh, a few months back that did have stars. I think it's one star, and I thought it was Venus they saw, not actually a star. I'll have to look that up real quick. Go ahead, entertain the audience while I do that. We did go to the moon. We've been to the moon several times. There was a 33rd degree Freemason moon landing ritual. We have been to the moon for the ancient builder race. There's ruins on there. There are all sorts of things on the moon. The moon's lost more than we'll ever find. And it was artificially placed into orbit 500,000 years ago after the war with Meldek and Mars because they, the blew shrapnel up. blew up the other stuff. Go boom. That's how we have the asteroid belt. Yeah, and I'm pulling up here. There was supposed pictures. Uh, I also have another question, though. Um, if we can, if we have, uh, supposedly, if we have all this technology to take pictures of Mars and take pictures of the moon and go on to the moon. How come we can't take a picture of the other side of the moon? I don't know. That's a very good question. That was a few months ago. That was from the rover that's on Mars. Uh, took a picture of the night sky, supposedly. So, you know. <laughs> Looks like stars to me. If, if, if the picture is real and legit. Yeah, but that's... Well, I don't, I don't know what just happened um, here. But it, uh, <laughs> except the part where... Yeah, yeah, it's the 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 barrier goes the opposite way, right? 
So it, it's uh, superimposed, I would call it, at best. Oh, that's fine. I didn't want to see. You sure? Just trying to hand it over there. Look at the corners, how it goes up instead of down. So, you know, that and and, and that and that was released, I think, you know, maybe back in April. Just just like so. their photos blurred out of the... Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if there's actually not a rover oh. on Mars Jesus at all. Um, Sorry. <laughs> you're fine. I, you're fine. I do. Short shit show versus technology. <laughs> Welcome to the shit show. You you are totally fine. Um, so going back to your story there. Uh, exactly. Of course, they don't want us to see it. They're gonna fucking copy and paste shit. Uh, Dirty Dan. I just want to know mm-hmm. why they are focusing on this now all of a sudden. Uh, instead of what? What's that look for? I, I, Dirty Dan, I am. I've got several people on the comments here in TikTok and in in, in Zoom, and it is just hilarious the commentary that is happening. What are What are some of the comments that you're saying? Oh, people are laughing at me because I knocked over the microphone. Oh, okay. and well, you didn't actually knock it over. Well, I got tangled in the yeah, cord. Is yeah. the problem? Yeah, it happens. It happens. I I want to know why they're suddenly looking at this um, to figure out what exactly it's composed of that's that's creating these frequency waves all of a sudden out of nowhere uh, versus Mars. Why do we go from getting everything onto Mars and finding everything out and sending stuff there to suddenly, uh, let's forget about that. Um, you know, we'll have the Goddard Space Flight Center focus on all of this stuff. The same reason that NASA was initially funded and created to go into the ocean and then they decided to go into fucking space. Yeah, but it's convenient that the Chinese said they're sending people to Mars and it's because it's a distraction. And now it's Jupiter. Yeah, yeah, that's it's what I was going to say. Oh, no, and that's what I'm saying. I want to know why. Well, I want to know why I do a lot of fucking things, but that ain't going to happen. You know, Tell I've, me why. You can sing. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Uh, do you take a request? Celine Dion, my heart will go on. Sing that. I don't want to, I don't want to kill your soundboard. Uh, okay, okay. Um, you mentioned NASA and when it was first uh, went to explore the ocean. Why do you think that they quit that so rapidly and then went, you know, to the moon? Because submarines. I personally, my personal opinion, and this it's very hard to fucking find research. Yeah, yeah, um, you, you yeah, you can't find a lot about it. Um, I do just want to interject really quick, though. Um, Dirty Dan, if you could... Speak up a little bit. Um, they're having a little bit of trouble hearing you on this end. Just throwing that out there. But anyway, back to um, the ocean. Um, I believe that the Bermuda Triangle is a portal. There's several portals, several portals. in the ocean. Yeah. There's also several giant fucking things that can kill you in the ocean yeah. that we don't even know about. We don't even know about them. So what if, what if the Bermuda Triangle is a portal and dumps you in the hyperdimensional hexagon on Saturn because there is a direct connect with Saturn and the oceans. We were talking about Jupiter. No, no we were talking was, about the ocean. <laughs> Stop. Don't do that. Don't confuse me. I'm already confused. Jupiter isn't on the map, by the way. Just I have always wondered, though, you know, why when they were exploring the ocean and then all of a sudden they quit. And they, hey, let's start exploring space now. Because they got scared. They, they got scared, and there is shit down there that right. they definitely, definitely don't understand nor want us to know about. Plus, then we would probably find out about the transplanetary um, yeah. transportation systems on well, the sea. And, and you mentioned something that I've never thought about before. If, you know, uh, the, the Bermuda Triangle is a portal and it goes to Saturn, maybe they wanted to study space to find out for sure that that's... Where where the, yes, yes, that that's where it went. That's a good thought. That that makes a lot of sense. It also makes me wonder, you know, how close is Davy Jones to being real? There is truth. There is always truth in every lie, isn't Probably there? Not. Yes. So wouldn't it just, I mean, are we, let's, okay, so let's look at it this way. Davy Jones locker. Let's look at, let's look at then religion, Maybe right? Maybe that's what's buried in Oak Island. Let's, let's then look at, <laughs> okay, so let's look at religion, right? Like there's truth. Behind the bits and pieces of religion that have that have been separated and spread out, so why wouldn't there be truth behind that? They put everything in fucking plain sight. It's just a matter as if you have 
removed that veil and those glasses to see it. And it was Disney. Of course it was. <laughs> so maybe it's not actually as bad in the movie as it is in, in real life then. Or maybe it's worse. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it, the real Davy Jones, you know, he doesn't have tentacles on his face. I mean, Davy Jones squid. could technically just be another name for the underworld or the devil or Satan. I mean, it doesn't matter, but there's truth in everything. It doesn't matter what you name it. Facts. I agree. So, do you have anything else there? Do you want to move on uh, to... Well, I, I have part two of that. Okay. Uh, which this, this is going to uh, involve short shit show over there. Uh, I'll pay attention. <laughs> with the death of the universe, uh, the cosmos ending in a bounce or a crunch. And it brings in to the discussion, if I can get the page up, the geometry of the universe. I love sacred geometry. What did I tell you? She'd love it. Oh, yeah. So they think that based upon the star child's uh, of the universe and the frequencies that are out there from all of us in in the Jupiter article, a hollow planet that emits those, um, they don't know if it's going to implode or explode. What are you shaking your head at me for? It's not going to do either. What's it going to do? It's going to ascend. How is the entire universe going to ascend? Enlight it- enlighten the people. <laughs> How is the universe not going to ascend? So energy can't be created or destroyed, right? Correct. It can be transferred. Manipulated or diverted. So if all of us and all of the frequencies are raising our vibrations, we are going to raise the vibration of not only the planet, but eventually of the universe. But what about the whole how a star is created? The black hole, the the big flash, everything of that. Is the star the same as a planet? What do you think, Goose? Um, no, I don't think the star is the same as a planet. Why? Because, you know, to be a planet, you know, are, 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 you, are you talking like a scientific definition or are you talking what? Go Jumping ahead. Jumping out of her seat. Go ahead. I didn't know the seat was going to move like that. Go ahead. Um, so <coughs> I, think, I think the biggest thing is if it can host life, if it's a living, breathing organism like Earth, right? If right. we can agree that Earth is a a conscious organism because it hosts life has its own heartbeat. That's where the Schumann resonance comes in. Stars don't have that. But stars are beams of energy, which we are as well. And if Pluto was the densest planet, why is it no longer a planet then? That's semantics. (laughs) Got him. (laughs) He hates that word. You don't like the word semantics? No, because it ruins his argument because the word semantics is actually a definition of itself and it's all how you look at it and how you interpret it. So when I say, when you when say When she says semantics, semantics to me, it means that she doesn't want to argue with me because she knows she's going to lose a 20. No, gotcha. I'm not gotcha. going to lose. It just means that I'm not going to sit here and split fucking hairs with you. Some of this is hair splitting. Well, yeah, but, so, yeah, but what you do, though, is you split hairs in the direction for you to win the argument when it's not true. We need to go the other direction of splitting hairs. False. I use facts. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll Listen. have the listeners write in and give us their opinion on it. I'm, I don't even know what the question was now. <laughs> I don't remember what we were talking about either. <laughs> Welcome to the shit show. <laughs> Uh, I believe what I had asked was, um, I don't even remember now. Yes. <laughs> Could a, is, a, is a star a, uh, a planet? Star planet yeah. No, no, because like she said, it has to host life. Why is the sun a, why, why is the sun a star and not a planet then? Because it doesn't host life. Mm-hmm. Can you live on the sun? No. I personally can't, but can any of us live on any of the other planets? Yep. Without altering? Yep. You're very quick to answer. Before There's I life on other planets. I understand that, but they have adapted to that. No shit. We've adapted to Earth. We were placed on Earth. Exactly. Earth was made for us, the, the whole big well, thing. Well, only some of us were placed on Earth. 
for no. the Pleiadians. But I mean, that's I mean, now if some you people wanna, think it, that we it, came from Mars. Well, we did. Well, yes. I mean, this is going to get in a whole other conversation. If you really want to go there, I don't know how much time we have. This oh. is going to turn into eighteen podcasts. So we're good. We're my good. closing. Maybe I'm not leaving. Maybe I'm going home. That brings some light into it. That, yes. Well, that actually brings me to my theory on sunglasses. Yeah, and you want to talk about I sunglasses. I did want to talk about sunglasses. Feel free. So, <clears throat> if we were placed here, right, like let's talk about white people, okay, because we burn, mm-hmm. right? We burn in the sun. So, uh, uh, Flocker brought this up, and he said that sunglasses – were invented to prevent us from properly adapting to the earth and to not make it through the solar flash because our eyes can't process the sun and the radiation from it, which means our body can't process it. So that directly linked me into horses, right? I'm, I, I've been with animals and horses for over 20 years. Horses shed and grow their winter coat based on the daylight hours. It really has very little to do with the temperature of the of the air, right. right? So, in theory, then, are we supposed to be able to look at the sun? Are we supposed to be able to see the eclipse? Right? So, if we've been wearing sunglasses, we have been programmed and changing our evolution to not be able to handle the sun, which is why we burn. So, did we lose another sense, another um, ability to connect with the environment? Because we have been shielding ourselves of that, right? Because animals don't need sunglasses. They do just fine. Right. And that's how they adapt to their environment, by the sun. I've never thought about that before. That is... Like show horses, if they don't want them to grow their winter coat, they keep them inside with UV lights on so that they think the sun is out 24-7. I forget to wear a welding helmet half the time, so I can stare at the sun all day long. We already know that you're the exception to all of the rules. There you have it, folks. She said it. Do you own a pair of sunglasses? I, if he can find one that fits his head. I do. Um, they, they they don't fit, though. So Okay. I have a very large head. Okay. That's that's a very good point, though, that, that you made. I've never really thought about that. Because sunglasses uh, are just filters. Mm-hmm. No. When were uh, sunglasses uh, invented? I don't know. Let's look it up. Goose it. Goose it. There you go. Goose we're going to goose it. So I'm going to say they were invented in the early 1900s. I'm going to do 1860s. Oh. My uh, audio keeps cutting in and out on this. That, that, that just might be where he's moving around and so forth. Stay still. What about now? Is Stay it good? Me. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Good. So, uh, are you looking at it? What am up? I looking at? Oh, yeah. The when sunglasses were invented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said 1860s. the eight, 1800s? And 1860s. I'm going to, I'm decades. Are we specific. taking bits? Are we taking bits? Goose said 1900. So, what, 1900, 1909? Okay, a brief yeah. history of sunglasses. Let's click on this. Oh. I said 1860 to 1869. You're wrong, my friend. I'm probably. So, you are. Mine says they were introduced in the 1900s. Oh, I have 1867. <laughs> oh, wait, we're invented uh, modern sunglasses as we know them. Ha ha. No, no, no. 1929. Ha ha. You're still wrong. By Sam Foster. No, no. Ha ha. The first mass produced shades. That's modern sunglasses though. Okay, so 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 in the mid 1700s a London opticianist ooh. began experimenting with green lenses to help with certain vision problems. So in and the green 1700s. green is the best color for protecting your eyes from the sun's rays. Mm. Yeah, UV glasses are green. So you were wrong. But I was closer. No. Just 1700s. Just accept the fact yes. that you were wrong. A- accept defeat, man. Come on. You were wrong. Y'all are ganging up on me. I'll flip this table. <laughs> Go ahead and fucking try. Please don't. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We've got all the equipment on here. That is a very good point, though, sunglasses. And how I, and I'd never really, I've, I've never thought about that. Do you have any, uh, do you need to take a break? Are we good? We good oh, to no. go? Do you do you guys need to say anything before we move on? We'll just go right straight into segment two. Just dive right in. Let her eat. Okay. Let her rip, Tater. Show. All right. I should have brought my button. <clears throat> I forgot it. JFK Jr. Alive or dead? <laughs> and I asked I ask both of you that. JFK Jr. 
Rebecca, is alive. he alive or dead? Okay. Alive or dead? Uh, I believe he's probably deceased at this point, but he didn't uh he didn't pass away when when we thought. So you don't think he passed away in 1999 in the plane I crash? I do not. But you think he has deceased since 1999? Yes. We're getting all sorts of alive, alive, alive. I think it's an Elvis situation. Okay. Well, why do you think he's alive? And I will tell you, um, I don't have this information printed off because it was a video I watched. But I will tell you exactly what it said and why I think it's possible that he is alive and well. And, and so is his wife. Hmm. Yep. Uh, so, so. Yep. Someone just commented it and Carolyn. Yes. So um, some information that I've come across. Okay. And we're going to go back to 1999. Uh, he was rumored to run for senator of New York. Yep. Okay, you know who his running uh, nemesis was going to be? It was going to be Hillary Clinton. Oh. Okay, he Hillary. was he was scheduled to fly out to Martha's Vineyard. Mm-hmm. Okay, on a certain day, mm-hmm. somebody at the airport noticed something suspicious about his plane before he left. So they contacted him and some of his bodyguards or co-workers, you know, his protectors, whatever you want to call them, they all go and they investigate, and they find that his plane is rigged with explosives. So instead of, you know, calling the authorities and going through, they work something out to where they rig the plane with a uh, remote uh, explosives, they record him saying, you know, given like a May Day, like a final call. So the day that the flight is scheduled to take off, it takes off and it is driven by a pilot, by a trained pilot with a parachute. He gets up so high, he plays the uh, recording, May Day, May Day. He jumps out of the plane. When he's safely away, he, detonate, he uh, detonates the bomb. So it appears... Like whoever uh, set up the uh, original stuff to explode the plane when it got to high altitude, it appears that that, that plan worked. Okay. They find the plane in the wreckage. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no autopsy. Uh, he's buried at sea. Everybody in the plane is buried at sea. And uh, from that point on, that is how he could have survived the 1999 plane crash. And they provided enough information and facts in this video that I think it is real and legit. I think that is how it happened. And I do think, you know, now with him supposedly being dead, guess who goes on to win the New York Senators race? Hillary. Hillary Clinton. There you go. What do you think about that story, Rebecca? Um, so I want to say, so we've gotten a couple comments um, that people agree with you 100%. And uh, we also had someone comment in uh, that John McAfee is his double, like John McAfee and JFK Jr. We're we're doubles. doubles. He's his doubles. Hmm. I think John McAfee looks more like Ingersoll Lockwood, but uh, but CGI and yeah, uh, yeah. all sorts of shit can make that difference. Well, yes, but, yes, it can. But here's why I think he was alive still. But okay, has, has to come because he struggled with pain pill addictions. For Addison's disease. So, you know, they have this whole plore. He's going to have to have a supply, and it's not going to be able to go down to Walgreens and pick it up, right? Right. So if he has to get it delivered in bulk, and he's already got that addiction that very few people knew about, they don't usually tend to uh, make it out on the good side of that. Well, but, you know, what if seeing his plane rigged up with explosives and somebody going to kill him, what if that, like... Puts him in a different mindset, you or know, like them downward worse. you know, like uh, screw these motherfuckers. I'm not going to let them win. It's a fifty fifty shot there of which way he's going to go. Well, what about why don't, uh, why don't we call him up and ask him? <laughs> yeah, believe me, if I had a number, we would definitely be calling him. All right, what about the video when somebody asked uh, his cousin if he was alive to touch his nose, and he touches his nose and then smiles and shakes his head, yes. What about that? Again, that can only be speculation. We can't confirm nor deny. And all they found was wreckage alleged to be his plane. 
Right, right. No trace of of him or Carolyn or Lauren because her daughter was with him, right? No, no. Her, yeah, no, her, uh, uh, cousin, her cousin. No, yeah. but they actually recovered three bodies. No, they said they did. Supposedly. But they were cremated the same day within no. hours. They as were, they, as they, were, they were cremated uh-huh. in this, within hours of them being recovered and having the full autopsies, autopsies done. That doesn't happen. And then they were buried at sea. Yeah, the ashes okay. were, quote, unquote, spread at sea. Okay, well, that right there to me sounds like. Cover up. Yeah, like he could be alive. Right. And I, I didn't discredit that. I said I believe he was alive. Right. He didn't die in that plane crash. But you, you do th- you do sense think he's passed away? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he had struggled with addiction for a number of years at that point, and it's over 20 years later. Well, but if you face a life and death situation, a true life and death situation, and he, was, he wasn't even 40 years old when he passed away, was he? Allegedly. Uh, wasn't he like... Th- 39, yeah, 38, 30, 39. Late 30s. So maybe that would open his eyes up. There were huh. 17 people on the boat that spread his ashes. So. 17. What's what's so? Very, very small number. Q. 17. Oh, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> so I think it's possible that he's alive. Will we ever know the truth? I think we will at some point in time, Yes. I mean, as long as he doesn't carry the family name and drive a beetle off a dock. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, well, all right. You have to look at it. The Clintons are getting older. Yeah. Once they die off, I think we'll know the truth about a lot of stuff. <clears throat> they're already dead. Oh, yeah, because so. cause Chelsea isn't going to say anything. She hates, no. the, she hates limelight. They're already so, dead. Is that what you said? So you think both of them are already dead? Yep, they're on the list. So I have not heard that one. No, I. I, I have heard rumors that that Hillary died several years ago, but not not, <laughs> not Bill. died executed. Right, executed, executed. Why? They're on the list. I don't There's think he knows a, what the list is. You don't know about the list, mm. Goose. I may have heard about this. I don't know. It goes into um, Gitmo. It goes into the tribunals. If I'm saying that oh, correctly, okay. it goes into like all of the things that you're seeing like play out in this giant fucking movie that we're watching, and why people are saying certain things. Like there's code. Like if they're self quarantining at home, it means that they took the deal, and that like other stuff. Like Biden's dead. Hillary Clinton's dead. I do have one thing to ask about Biden. Yeah. Why are in certain pictures? Are his ears attached at the lobe and others not? Because there are two white hat actors I have playing that. him. Exactly. There are two white hat actors playing him. It's all it's all on the map. Yeah, but how do we how do we know if there is a, a him? What do you mean? What does it say about that on the map? About the you said there were two white hat actors yeah. playing him. You want to look at it? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. No, but I, I have noticed the earlobe pictures. You know, and some if you go with some of the stuff online, they say James Woods is one of them. James Woods and... Um, Family Guy said that one. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. I'll have to pull up that episode. What is, um, who was the other one? Is it, it's not, is it Jim Carrey? Oh, Obama. Yeah. Obama. Obama. Obama, because he took the deal. So, Obama is playing... One of the Bidens okay. and James Woods is playing the other one. And if you now that you know that, if you listen to him speak, you know which one is which. Hmm. If you can get through a speech of his. But no, I always. Well, I mean, some of them I can because I'm. Well, I'm laughing till I cry. So can we just talk? Can we go back to sunglasses for a second? Yeah, yeah. I, I was reading on this, and um, what's actually super interesting. While well, I pull that other thing up for you is that the Chinese uh, made a slight improvement in the 12th century and used smoky quartz for lenses. And it wasn't actually for anything to do with sunlight. It was to conceal the judge's expressions. Mm. Hmm. But it's it's interesting that they use smoky quartz. Yeah. Yes, so, that is. Fun fact. What was I looking at? Oh, right. Yeah. The the Biden on the on the on the Great Awakening map. Again, if anybody wants to call in, all you got to do is call 606-373-3396. That will put you live uh, in touch with us right now as we are recording this episode. Again, this episode should drop around uh, 4, maybe just a little bit after uh, today. Um, Let's see. Okay, I'm going to look at the map here. So, entertain the audience, Dirty Dan. Talk to them. (laughs) Well... Do you want me to give them a play-by-play of what you're doing? Sure. Or, okay. 
Rebecca's pointing. So now she's laughing. So if you if you guys aren't familiar with this map, we keep referencing. But don't touch it because it'll move. It's called the Great yeah. Awakening map. You can get it on out Art House. 5d.co yeah or um if you just if you follow me on if you look up rebecca on social media it's short shit show it's all in my uh, it's in her link tree it's everywhere it's everywhere um, it's also on my website if you go to short shit show.com or the short shit show.com um all of the links are available in there as and well you don't have to purchase a poster i love fucking connection it is a uh, wow. there are free digital downloads available correct on the site yep okay yep wow. there's over what did you eight over eight hundred points? There on are that? yeah eight hundred points on the uh, the Great Awakening map, and they all uh, they all connect. I mean, eventually, one way or another, they 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 all connect, and a lot a lot of shit starts making sense once you start un- unraveling this. And if you're new to here to Chew Bubblegum, our show is heard globally. Uh, it's heard in the United States, Canada, Australia, Finland. United Kingdom, Germany, New Zealand, Ireland, Philippines, Singapore, Nigeria, Indonesia, France, Norway, South Africa. Uh, South Africa is new. Uh, these last three are new. India, Poland, and Brazil. And uh, we want to thank all of our listeners. And, again, you can listen on Spotify, uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, some other platforms coming on board, hopefully within the next uh, few months. Uh, we'll have big news when that comes up. Uh, so final thoughts, JFK Jr. You think he did survive? You 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 think he did survive the plane crash? Correct, Dirty Dan. Correct. But he's not with us now due to his pain pill addiction, and which can spiral to anything. Right. Um, right. And and you're absolutely correct. Coming, coming from from someone with a background of of a dark path, you know, right. it's not always the easiest thing to do. Right. Got you. What's your final thoughts on JFK Jr. alive? Um, I think he is alive, and I haven't I haven't dived in deep enough to that to speak on it, so I'm not going right. to. I think it's very possible that the story I told is accurate, and I think he could be alive and well. Uh, will we ever find out? I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. So, moving on in segment two. Rebecca, it's your turn again. What subject do you have prepared for us that you want to talk about? Or I, I, just I talk about prepared anything? the... F- the fucking trip, all right? That okay. was my. That was what I prepared. <laughs> um, I mean, I can. I mean, there's so many things that I. I don't know what direction you want to go with this, but I mean, we can talk about a whole bunch of shit. Uh, just, just something that fascinates you that that you want to talk about on the show. Now is your chance. Potpourri. Potpourri. Do you have it in your restroom? No. Okay. But that's the different the culmination of yeah. things to pick from the potpourri so. pot. Pick, pick one, pick, pick one, <laughs> pick one, pick one. I don't know. You want to talk about sacred geometry? I love sacred sure. geometry. Now, I will admit, I may get lost because I would suck at math, but it's got nothing to do with math. Okay, well then I should be good. Well, I mean, part of it kind of does. But okay, now you're not going to have me doing any like figures or trying to add up anything. You or will like need that. a giant whiteboard and okay. different colored markers and okay. possibly string. So okay, and a unicycle. I have all those. Can you juggle? I, I have no, no, I can't. Damn. So, sorry guys. Um, so sacred geometry is not only all over the Great Awakening map, but it ties into everything. Everything can be broken down into sacred geometry. The flower of life can be seen in in nature. It can be seen in architecture. It can be seen everywhere. Same with the golden ratio, which is like it looks like a snail shell, like the spiral in is um, the golden ratio. And that is actually a mathematical equation that, that a lot of things break down into. And I actually had a Flocker post um, in one of my chats, a picture of a dog curled up, and it they put the sacred geometry over it, and that never fucking clicked for me. All the experience I have in animals, that one never clicked. But yeah, even uh, even the dogs and the cats like curl up into sacred geometry. Hmm. Well, don't you uh, have an interesting fact about cats? I do have an interesting facts about cats. Do you want to share it? Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So cats are seen as very sacred across multiple religions and history. I mean, let's go back, back to, to Egyptians, Egyptians, right? They had these giant monuments and, and statues created for, for cats. They held them in very high stature. So 
based on that theory, there is um, an idea that cats are when a soul needs to take a rest and doesn't want to come back in human form. And they are thought to be guides and watchers, which is why they are attracted to certain people. And their purr is actually at a healing frequency. And they only purr and meow for humans. 14 pulses a second. I, I have think heard it's at, that about is it 432 purr. hertz for a cat's purr. I can't remember what frequency it's at, but it is a healing frequency. Um, and the uh, the other cool thing about cats is, you know, when they sit like a little duck and they like tuck their feet and their heads just like resting and they're, they look like they're asleep, but they're not asleep. They're meditating. Hmm. I could, I got, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. But um, back to like sacred geometry. I mean, everything, everything can be broken down into sacred geometry. The hyperdimensional hexon on the North Pole of Saturn breaks down into sacred geometry. The Flower of Life breaks down into sacred geometry. The sixty-four tetrahedron vector equilibrium is sacred geometry. The energy torus field is sacred geometry. And the reason that I, that I believe that the earth is hollow is because the energy flow and sacred geometry does not work on a flat earth theory for me in my head. And on paper too, you, you can't have geometry, sacred geometry, if it's not geometry. Right. If it's not, um, what's where's, the word? I'm where's Wanda? <laughs> If it's so, if it's not symmetrical, yes, yes, that's the word I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Well, what's your thoughts on using geometry to get, let's say, uh, time travel? Do you think that the secret to time travel is in geometry? Yes, one hundred percent, because it shows the openings. So you can actually, if you look at sacred geometry and then you look at like the ley lines Mm -hmm. and you look at the chakras of the earth and those line up with the ley lines, with the stargate portals, with sacred geometry, look at around the equator with all of the buildings across multiple, like thousand years in between these different cultures and um, times of these things being built all, all at very certain points. Very particular points. Like, look at the pyramids. If you look at the pyramids, they are all set up for sacred geometry. They are also all in line with um, the uh, the uh, the stars, the belt. What? Ryan's belt. Thank yeah. you. Wow, brain fart. Um, and they all point at the arrow. Every single set of them. Like, the, the pyramids on Mars are set up in the golden ratio. Oh, let me just show you. Do you think there's any stargates that are unguarded that anybody could just happen, uh, happen up along? Guarded. I, yes, because uh, I don't think they have to be guarded. I don't think anybody that shouldn't recognize them or understand them can find or see them. Gotcha. Okay, so gotcha. Here, here's, and this is what I'm showing him. I know that I've posted this. I know that I've posted this before. But here's all of the sacred geometry that shows up in nature, in cultures, in art, all of it. I've saw a bunch of this stuff before mm-hmm. and never really realized. Never clicked. It. Two plus two equals four. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And the um, the golden ratio. This is the golden ratio. Now I have saw that before, the, but the Fibonacci code. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kind of explain that to me a little bit. Tell me what that's about. Um, I don't know the mathematical side of it. I am terrible. But I mean, like, basically, what's it? What's it used for? Everything. Everything can be broken down to the golden ratio, and it's used for a number of things: math, architecture, art, all of it. It's the cat's meow. Um, but here is meow. The, here is the pyramids on Mars. Yeah. That are broken down into the golden ratio. Wow, that line up geometry. perfectly. Mm-hmm. Of course, no. Now you know if you listen to the news, those aren't pyramids; those are shadows. Mm-hmm. Which I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. I don't no. buy that at and all. And then here is all of the sacred geometry, like More on itself. Damn groundhog! Wow! 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 Mind, mind blown! Mind blown! But it's all symmetrical. Yes. Yeah. Whoops! I'm sorry about that. That was me. It's the first time I've ever done that. First, first day on the job. And yeah. then if you look at like the, um, you know, the, uh, 
I don't know how to I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it the the Egyptian thing? A N K A N K H A N H Anaki? No. The I don't know how to say it, it doesn't matter. Refer but, to ancient aliens. Yeah. Um it's the it's the cross with the loop on the top. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Which lines up with the planets. Wow. Wow. Which also lines up into the tree of life. And the tree of life lines up into the flower of life. And boom, everything's connected. Yeah, we can we can go like I can show you all all sorts of things that this all lines up into. Wow. I mean, you know, and, and you said everything's connected. Everything is connected. Mm-hmm. I mean, it above, is connected. So As within, you know. so without. As the universe, so in self. The macro is connected to the micro. Definitely. Definitely. Which then leads back in. Okay, so you want to circle this back to um, ascension and all of us raising our vibrations. The macro affects the micro. As we collectively come together, as we set aside our differences, and we just agree to disagree on some things and just put it behind us, we can collectively raise our vibration and our collective consciousness, thus also helping the planet raise her vibrations as well and ascend into 5D and fucking break out of this bullshit. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now, you commented that. Uh, so you don't think, let's say somebody could see a Stargate mm-hmm. and they happened upon it. Mm-hmm. Do you think they would be able to access it and use it? I believe that that is, those are meant for anyone but not everyone is meant to understand those right um i just feel like it's one of those things where if you know you know and if you're meant to use it you will you can if you have that purpose yes rebecca um so the stargate portals also go back to the egyptians um and i'm trying to find the picture but if you look at like the art and the way that things were um, depicted, the Stargate portals look the same as, like, the boats and stuff that they used. Mm-hmm. Um, hold on, I'm trying to find the image. But, yeah, it's all, it's all connected. Hmm. And they, they knew what they were doing with that. And over time, it's been suppressed. And hit, there it is. And if a, a random person were to come to it, it's just a strange phenomenon that wow. happened. Wow. You know, th- someone someone could witness someone else going through it and you have another Bermuda triangle. If you could walk through a portal and go to another dimension, would you do it? Hell if, yeah. If given the opportunity. Absolutely. What about you? Mm-hmm. Cause then I would see the, the four people in the JFK car instead of six. It's four. <laughs> six. No. It's four. All right. All right. But that, but, brain- that, but that goes into astral projecting. Right. Well, that brings us back around. Do you think if you did walk through a portal, a portal to another dimension do you think it would be the environment number one do you think it would be the same as you see around here do you think there would be similarities i don't think it'd be like a dystopian future if that's what you're getting at no 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 i'm not saying it would be a future it would just be different from this this uh reality well i mean every reality is different um but it's built off the same foundation do so, you do do you think that you would? I, th- I think you'd find synchronicities. Okay. Would you try to look yourself up just to see from a distance, not like go up and be like, "Hey, buddy, you know, I'm you from another dimension." Just like secretly watch. You no, know, I don't want to know what I'm doing. <laughs> Why? You wouldn't want to know what you were up to in another dimension? No, I I think that would be a waste of that time because I feel like if I had that opportunity, it'd be for for something else rather than to to creep on me. Um, you know, it's well, but maybe that would explain something. You know, maybe that would explain the meaning of life. Maybe it could answer unanswered questions. Who says that another dimension is going to be even remotely close to this one? And that's what the, the, he, he may find, exist in another dimension that does. He doesn't look like that. I could be like his energy could be in a different form. I could be a fruit fish. Snort bubbles. Snort bubble. <laughs> but that, and that's what I'm saying. Like I, I don't I don't think that I, unless it was, you know, somehow told to me, you must go and find what you are in this dimension. Right. I don't I don't think that'd be the purpose. I don't I don't think it would be What would you do then? What well, what would be your purpose if you could access another dimension? To just explore and understand and figure out more synchronicities and live that life. 
find find uh, an inner me, uh, inner meaning to that one. Would you try to educate people if they showed initiative? What if they didn't? Next. <laughs> yep. Don't waste your energy. What about you? Uh, I agree. I agree with Dirty Dan. Um, I, I mean, the astral projection thing just fascinates the the shit out of me. But it's all learning experience. Yeah. It's it's all about understanding that there is more beyond this cookie cutter life that they have drilled into our fucking heads. Right. And I think once that you can accept that and once we can understand that there is a whole other thing out there that is based on completely different laws and realities and the way that things function. I mean, there's like the ability to fly or telekinesis or the ability to go underwater. I mean, those laws don't exist in our reality. The other realities, the other dimensions don't operate under the same laws that ours does. So one once, of those could be sacred to another dimension. Right, exactly. I mean, it, and it's, and then to answer your other question as far as like, would you want to ed- educate those? I completely 100% agree with uh, Dirty Dan is, I can explain it to you until I'm blue in the face. I cannot understand it for you. You can right. lead a horse to water. But you can't make him drink. However, you can just grab their neck and throw them in there. <laughs> However, you can bring that horse to water and lead the other ones to it as well. And that's, it's, it's about transmuting negativity. It's about leading with love and light and finding more like-minded people to raise the vibrational consciousness. Yeah. And change usually affects the masses. Mm-hmm. And, you know. And if you want change, you have to invite chaos. There you go. And that's a good point to uh, end this episode on. We're going to close out the show. You can always call, text, or leave a voicemail by calling 606-373-3396. You can email me, goose, at here to chew bubblegum.com. And me, Dirty Dan, at here to chew bubblegum.com. You can email Pup Ned or Elliot at here to chew bubblegum at yahoo.com. I want to thank our special guest, very special guest, Rebecca Short of the Short Shit Show. Also, thanks to Carlin for all the voiceover work. CK, Uncle Bill, and the rest of the gang over at Dead Pit, good, uh, deadpit.com. Be sure to check out Justin Perkins of Talk Junkie. Also, down on the holler with Jordan and Brad. And don't forget about Seth's daily podcast. Also, up now and running a new podcast, the Spooky Family Podcast. For more information, visit the thespookyfamilypodcast.com. And if you want to awaken more Check out Rebecca Short on TikTok. The Short Shit Show. That'll do it for this week. We'll see you next week. And until then, so long for now. Maybe I'm not leaving. Maybe I'm going home. Thanks for listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. Tune in next time as we dive deeper into things the government doesn't want us to know.